user mods or config file tweaks purporting to fix a game's performance and optimize it are nearly all just a swindle. But finally, I can report of one mod that measurably fixes a part of a game's performance issues, and that is for Capcom's extremely troubled Monster Hunter Wilds. Thanks to a mod, you can now play the game with better performance on low to mid-spec GPUs. How does this mod work? We'll get into that shortly, but first, this. The big holiday discount season is upon us, with MSI bringing some of its biggest savings ever. Check out discounts on MSI displays, including critically acclaimed QD OLEDs like the MPG272URX and the MPG321URXW. But there's more. Grab up to $100 off MSI graphics cards and up to $150 off MSI motherboards, cases and coolers while stocks last. Click on the link in the video description below for more details. To know how this mod for Monster Hunter Wilds functions, you need to know a bit about the game itself. The game right now performs much like it did on release, where I panned the game's performance on mid to low spec GPUs. First of all, no matter the settings, it did not offer satisfying visuals for its performance, especially if you compare it to its contemporaries, where even with its anemic ray tracing set to off, the game still managed to run like a game that was filled to the brim with expensive ray tracing, like Star Wars Outlaws, for example, yet it manages to look so much worse and have no ray tracing. The second part is if you had an 8GB GPU like many do. The game's memory management is really abysmal. You have to choose between medium quality textures, which look straight up PS2-like, or high quality textures that are still kind of somewhat poor, but cause intrusive stutter throughout your entire play experience. The situation led me to declare the game as unoptimizable at launch, as you couldn't really get a satisfying visual performance experience there. Eight months later, the game is much the same actually, but users have now fixed Capcom's technical disaster to a degree. No snake oil here. No BS engine.ini's, but a real piece of ingenuity thanks to the folks making RE Framework and Eigen's, I don't know how to say it, Monster Hunter Wild Text Decompressor. I was made aware of this mod by the user Oimel Oimel, and I used this guide by the same person on Steam, which details how to install the mod in simple steps, links for which are found in the video description below. The mod works in the following way. First, you need to install RE Framework in the typical way of dropping the D8 input DLL into the main game folder. Then you need to load up the game as it loads up, tick this option I show here in the RE Framework menu, hit insert to close the menu causing it to save for future game starts, then quit the game and run the texture decompressor exe from the Monster Hunter main directory that was linked in the description and follow on-screen instructions. Here the EXE will replace the G-Deflate compressed texture assets with uncompressed ones that are readily GPU readable and require no real-time decompression. The old compressed assets will be saved with an appended dot backup extension in the same folder in case you need them later. On an 8GB GPU, this mod, in all of its short steps, will have a profound effect on the way you experience the game. As mentioned before, you could use high textures before, but it would just cause stutters. So you would be forced to use the medium ones, which are extremely low quality. After the mod's been applied via the decompressor EXE on an 8GB GPU, you can now run the high textures in-game and no longer suffer from bouts of spiky frame times. Good examples of this can be found in the game's initial intro cinematics. With the default high textures on the left and the modded runs on the right, we can see how the default high ones on the left have multiple times in the intro cutscenes where there are moments where there are regular repeatable frame times spikes, either before or after camera transitions or in the middle of faster moving scenes. These instances are 100% repeatable and measurable, but they are also 100% cleaned up by utilizing the mod with it set to the high texture setting. And this better performance is not because the game is now loading inferior textures or something. The mod offers the same end-to-end -end texture quality for the user. You can see that in a three-way comparison with the default medium settings on the far left, default high in the middle, and modded high on the right. In moments where medium is noticeably inferior, 
the modded textures provide the same visual quality experience as the default high, but of course with better frame times. The reason why this mod works is because it is pre-decompressing textures on disk, taking roughly 24 gigabytes of compressed assets and replacing them with 41 gigabytes of uncompressed ones on disk for the game's default high textures. It is increasing the amount of disk space used in this case and foregoing real-time decompression. In the worst case scenario, on a GPU like the RTX 4060 with its lower GPU compute and strained bandwidth, the difference can be shockingly large with this mod on. Like here, in this scene after the game's intro. In this camp, running around it without the mod using the default high textures causes the GPU to actively decompress everywhere, and it also manages to constantly overcommit memory. Like a pendulum, the game switches between constantly craggy stutter frame times and smooth ones depending upon where you look and how you move. It's completely unplayable, and to get it playable you would have to drop to medium textures here. With the mod active though, the game's memory management system seems to work much better and there's no active decompression occurring, so performance is no longer so depressed and wild. It runs comparatively flawlessly on the RTX 4060 with the mod on while having those same high textures. Monster Hunter Wilds appears to use GPU decompression, and this causes issues across many games in our experience. Although in the menu, the game maintains that it uses CPU decompression regardless of your hardware, loading up Special K does indicate the game is using G-Deflate GPU decompression. The few games that this has been used in, like Ratchet & Clank, has caused issues with frame times that are not necessarily found there with traditional CPU decompression. And that is also true for Monster Hunter Wilds. We can see the evidence of the mod working with statistics from CapFrameX. If we pause the game in those moments where there are key frame time differences, we can often see measurable differences there in how the GPU is being used. GPU memory is largely the same with some run-to-run -run variants, but take a look at that PCIe RX value. This is going to measure how much stuff is being uploaded to the GPU and we can see that the mod has roughly double the amount of gigabytes per second at times being received by the GPU over the PCIe bus. So with the mod there are more things transferring over the PCIe bus occasionally and I presume that is because textures are now uncompressed on disk and uncompressed in system memory and then being transferred over, thus requiring more bandwidth. This is of course a trade-off in disk space for upload bandwidth, but you're getting much better frame times because GPU decompression is no longer in use. If you're a person like me, I think you may find this an acceptable trade-off. I think getting rid of frame time spikes and stutters are definitely worth it for trading a bit of disk space. This is not the first time we've seen this trade-off being made for games. A number of games ship on PC with higher disk space size to incur less real-time decompression. A great example of that is God of War Ragnarok, which requires almost 190 gigabytes on disk on PC versus the 80 some on a PS5. There the developer Jetpack Interactive purposefully left the texture assets uncompressed so as not to decompress them in real time on the CPU or GPU, thus freeing up PC resources and avoiding potential performance issues at the cost of disk space. This mod for Monster Hunter Wilds is doing that exact same thing, but it's doing it after the game's been downloaded, so it doesn't require longer download times. And it is of course not at all intended by the developer here. It's a mod. Honestly, after having played around with this for a bit, I wonder why this is not a more common thing in the PC space. Compression formats used on PC, like G-Deflate or Zlib, are very common and can be readily uncompressed at any point in time, really. Why not offer players the ability to do that before they play a game, instead of real-time while playing it? It's an intriguing premise, actually, and it would have done wonders for games like The Last of Us Part 1 or Ratchet & Clank, which have suffered issues from using real-time decompression. I imagine a number of PC players would happily elect to sacrifice disk space for improved performance in a game. I definitely know I would. So the mod seems to work and is wonderful for those of you using 8GB GPUs and wanting to have those better textures on the high setting with better performance and less stutters. The one area where the mod does not work currently though is with the high res texture DLC pack. 
the mod will take the time to decompress those assets on disk, turning a 71 gigabyte pack file into a 120 gigabyte uncompressed one. But when you go in game on a GPU capable of running those textures, like an RTX 5090 that I tested on, it's clear to see that the high res texture pack textures never actually end up loading. Like here, look at these clothes or the color on this character. The default unmodded textures are loading correctly here on the left, but the modded uncompressed ones on the right appear to never end up loading, leaving the textures at just a high quality, as if the DLC was never installed. This can be further confirmed by looking at the VRAM usage in such scenes using CapFrameX's statistics. Here we can see the mod is using almost 4 gigs less of total GPU memory, thus implying to me that the assets are actually never getting to memory in the first place. This is a shame, of course, as real-time decompression of the DLC textures also will take their toll on performance. So it would be wonderful if the mod worked here, but alas, at the moment, it only seems to work for the base textures up to the high preset and not for the DLC textures. Completely uninhabited. Any remnants of its ancient civilization rest solely in historical record. Coming to the end of this shorter video covering a Monster Hunter Wilds PC texture mod, I'm astounded by what the PC community is capable of. Without any source code access, they have made it possible for users to electively increase the game size on disk by about 17 gigabytes with those high textures and increase performance, thus making those high textures viable on 8 gigabyte GPUs. It's surprisingly simple, and it really makes me wonder why this is not an option for this game by default. And why don't more games take this route, electively for users, allowing them to uncompress assets on disk to save on performance if their hardware would allow it? Really makes you wonder, doesn't it? Anyway, if you like this mod showcase, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell in the corner, support on Patreon, follow on Blue Sky, and as always, this is Alex, bring you farewell and auf Wiedersehen. Thank <laughs> you.